prehistoric cave painters might have been high on oxygen deprivation. A new study explains, this is by Paul Petit, Professor, Department of Archaeology, Durham University of the UK, and it's an article on the conversation. Long before the emergence of writing, Paleolithic cave paintings represent the very first examples of human visual culture. They provide a shadowy glimpse of a prehistoric world in which signs were being beginning to be used to communicate meaning. Archaeologists have long been fascinated over what exactly compelled cavemen to produce these enigmatic paintings because they're often located in caves, enchanting in atmospheric places in our own right. Their own right, as certain experts have argued that prehistoric painters may have produced their art under the influence of altered states of consciousness. The theory essentially claims that painters are in some way, well, were in some way, high. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. In support of this theory, a new study has found that low oxygen levels in poorly ventilated caves can induce hypoxia, which can inspire hallucinations. But while the theory is certainly plausible, here's why I think it fails to explain the majority of cave art. Now about cave art, over 65,000 years ago, the Neanderthals left finger dots and hand stencils on European cave walls. These basic markings were made using okra, manganese, and charcoal, common materials in Neanderthal life, likely also used to ornament the body. Now, Eurasian figurative art, featuring representations of people and animals, appeared some 40,000 years ago in Indonesia and 37,000 year ago, years ago in Europe. And this appears to have been exclusive to the successors of Neanderthals, that is, Homo sapiens. These people's images of herbivorous prey animals were carved, the uh, herbiv herbivorous prey animals carved, engraved and painted on bone, stone, and mammoth ivory, and on the walls of caves. The overwhelming dominance of prey such as horse, bison, deer, and mammoth reflects the critical importance of these species to survival in the harsh environments of the Pleistocene North. But why figurative cave art emerged and how it functioned has baffled archaeologists since its rediscovery and authentication in the late 19th century. Whether they're simple stencils of hands or complex drawings of prey, cave paintings, are a window into the minds of the very first artists. And they were, some of these uh, depictions are really beautiful, very beautiful. Now, scholars believe that knowing what inspired them could teach us something about the very human compulsion to express ourselves creatively. Now, why paint? Successive theories have purported to explain the origins of ancient art, a rich and varied collection that we know was added to over at least 50,000 years of prehistory. Yet these theories inevitably say more about their proponents than about the motives of Pleistocene man. To the Victorians, those motives boiled down to pure aesthetics. In the 20th century, scholars began to believe the paintings had a magical function and theories of hunting and fertility magic arose to explain drawings of animals and sculptures of Venuses. Now, as we entered the information age, the images came to be seen as repositories of ecological information, recording details about things like prey animals and their behavior. And by the 1980s, the worst excesses of New Age thinking promoted the idea that cave art was a product of altered states of consciousness and the visions that can go hand in hand. Since then, the notion has never gone away. Altered states? But what could have caused ancient altered states? Psychoactive substances other than fly agaric, that is red and white top mushroom, were not present in Pleistocene Eurasia. Ingesting okra or manganese would give you a poor stomach, 
but not hallucinations. A new study has proposed altered states instead caused by low oxygen levels produced by small hearths and simple animal fat lamps that would have burned in confined caves. The authors claim this could have induced hypoxia, which is oxygen deprivation, leading to hallucinations, which in turn stimulated creativity in the form of cave art. Typically, around 21% of air is oxygen. Any reduction below 18% produces a mild hypoxia, and below 13% produces severe hypoxia. The study used as, uh, computer simulations to demonstrate the plausibility of this new theory while drawing on ethnography, notably the ubiquity of shamanic belief systems among hunter-gatherers and the idea that caves form a link between this world and others. And reviewing the theory, it's plausible that altered states simulated some cave art, but it's just as plausible that hypoxia in caves produce far more common symptoms of weakness, headaches, drowsiness, nausea, and breathlessness, which do not sound inspiring to me. In any case, cave chambers vary considerably in size and are often decently ventilated. The uh, Naus Salon Noir in southwestern France is positively cathedral-like and features many cave paintings. Many examples of cave art are also complex and highly skilled compositions that took hours to produce. They're unlikely to be the product of hallucinations. It's difficult to falsify the new hypothesis scientifically, but even if it's true, what would it really tell us? At best, altered states could provide a mechanism but not an explanation for some Paleolithic art. If they did cause some individuals to create, they would not explain the contents, themes, styles, or wider function of the art. To discuss altered states is therefore as meaningless as making the observation that the tomb builders of Egypt's Valley of the Kings drank beer. We know that, but we cannot be sure that it wasn't drunkenness. We can be sure it was not drunkenness that stimulated them to create the art on the walls of the tombs they built. I've spent enough time underground observing cave art and its contents to understand how making simple links between hallucinations, shamanism, and cave art fails to do justice to the remarkably complex work created by early artists in these mysterious places. Now, why are altered states perennially popular explanations for Paleolithic cave art? It's probably because caves are mysterious, suggestive places triggering response in our brains such as pareidolia, our evolutionary propensity to give meaning to natural things like finding faces in clouds. In our everyday lives, we constantly toggle between mild, mild altered states of consciousness. They make our imaginary lives immensely rich and may go some way to explaining how early art took the form it did. Ultimately, imagination is far richer than trance and we do a disservice to our prehistoric ancestors when we argue that their art was a product of a high rather than creative expression. I believe that it was creative expression. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. This is on the conversation.